Uh, yeah, I did a little bit of light shooting. Don't have a new update. You know, I, I thought at times we, we did things with, with purpose. Um, you know, we were able to get some plays uh, uh, in between. I think that kind of helped, so we weren't just only you know facing uh, you know the, str the strength of their defense. Um, but there are times that we weren't doing it with enough intention uh, and purpose, and you know that's where they're really good. They're unique. You know, their ability to um, kind of muck it up and um, get you in the mud. Um, Limit your your ball and body movement, um, and they can really protect the rim uh, well. You know, particularly with Williams, we we got uh, we got stuck there a few times. Uh, uh, but in the second half, we're you know more intentional, um, and that's what uh, you know it's going to take, even with your in mission shots. Are you at the point now where most of your off days are going to be kind of like today? You know, you're going to do a whole ton of on court the rest of the way, or? I don't know. Um, you know, with every other day, and the fact that we're, uh, you know, already a month into us into it, uh, you can gain a lot from what we just did. Uh, you know, we had practice days before this the series started. Uh, we also have to, you know, manage manage er everything the best that we can. I, I view this as a practice. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, on the court training camp and pads and braces and all that stuff. We still can get a lot accomplished and. Um, you know, and with the film and, and sometimes walk through. Does that complicate whatever the return to the public house for Kyle will be? No. Like no, we still have enough bodies. Look, we have 17 bodies, you know, so when we get to a point where we need to, you know, start scrimmaging and get some live action, we can do that. I know the coaches always believe that the game's not over until the final buzzer. When you hear your team's victory anthem play with four minutes left to go against a competitive team like Boston, one, did you take notice of that? And two, would you, might you prefer if they played Gosh. a little longer? You know what? I did not notice it last night. And it took me like uh, probably five games during the regular season to realize, uh, you know, when our players were like getting all hyped up in the huddle, I'm like looking around, they focus, you know? <laughs> uh, and then. You know, everybody told me to get uh, my head out of the sand, and I realized what it was. I didn't even know they, uh, it was played last night. So your question is, uh, should I have yelled at somebody for, for them not playing it that or early? If I knew, uh, yeah, at <laughs> that point, uh, the, I thought the, the game was very much in the balance. Maybe they should I will it. talk to the appropriate people. Oh. <laughs> Eric, Maybe with, uh, with Gabe and Max and Caleb, besides the willingness to put in the work. There's a maturity, sort of a groundedness to them. I'm curious, do you, Chet, Pat, Andy, Adam, talk about qualities you want like that character maturity in the young guys that you choose to develop? How much is something which you all act, is that something you actively want? It's a big part of it. You, you have to have, you gotta find the right kind of guys that uh, have the makeup that can, you know, uh, prosper uh, in our environment. Uh, uh, and that's not everybody, uh, and that's not an indictment on anybody. That's, that's not. It, 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 you know, you you have to have a certain approach, and both those guys do. They're, they're both very mature. They played four years of college. Uh, Max, was this transfer year, maybe five years. I don't know. But the, you know, even as you know, uh, as they come in as young players, they both played, you know, in the G League, um, summer leagues, uh, and. Uh, have spent a lot of time in, in our player development program, uh, and they're both over 25 years old. Um, I, I view them as vets, not as, not as young players. And not being sick of seeing, to use your term, where they raise their game in pressure moments, as we've seen from both the last week. I guess it doesn't surprise you because of the maturity and the work they put in, right? Yeah, they both have chips on their shoulders. Uh, they both um, have gained a confidence from their work uh, and also seeing it be successful during the regular season you know in big moments and they both have earned the trust of everybody in the locker room staff and players alike uh, and that's not something that's happened uh, overnight um, it, it's been weeks and months Eric, what do you remember about Max in Boston Tyler and Bam said they didn't even know he played for the Celtics was there something you kind of identified I didn't no you'd have to ask the, the scouting department 
uh, I remember the first time, uh, you know, Adam brought up his name. I watched a bunch of film. That was the first time I'd ever seen him play. Uh, it was literally about a week before we signed him here. What do you remember about the early days you were here? I think Tyler said he didn't miss a shot the first time. Yeah, I don't really notice or, or care about that. It's more about the approach, the professionalism, the work ethic, and and then having the the grit and perseverance and mental stability to, to do that uh, consistently during a long NBA season. And uh, you know everybody can do it for a week or it's going great at the beginning, but then you get three months into the season, I, I think we all get revealed on what our makeup is. Uh, and both those guys, uh, you know, ferocious and consistent with their work ethic. And uh, that's probably what I noticed with Max, you know, three or four months through through last year of the season. And then staying consistent even when he was out of the rotation. Um, that can sometimes set guys a little bit sideways, and it didn't, didn't with him. Yeah. No, this is really – it's disappointing. You know, it's like every t single time we think, like, all right, this is kind of getting behind us. It's it's not, and it's frustrating, you know, for all of us. And uh, you don't want to see it on, on either side. Uh, you want, you know, you know, to play, you know, against their best uh, and try to beat their best with our best. Um, it's just not the world we're, we're, we're living in right now. Um, and it's really been, you know, three years of this. You just oh, have to expect the unexpected. Do you have an injury, uh, an injury update for PJ Tucker? Is, is placing an injury I'm designation on him is the kind of a moot point. I don't want to get cursed out today, so I didn't <laughs> ask him. You Sports. mentioned the uh, lack of ball movement. Um, do you see this as a series where Butler and Hero are just going to have to rescue more possession? I don't know. You know, they're, they're a unique defensive team. You know, I, I, I think we're going to have to fight for uh, what we do, how we do it, and and try to get to that more often than not. Um, but that's also why you have great players, you know. But you get to this time of year, you can have all the greatest, you know, plans of shifting a defense and moving them and playing out of closeouts. Uh, it gets tougher and tougher each round, you know, to be able to do that. And they are, they're so well-schooled and well-coached and really competitive, you know, two-way guys. Uh, you got to get whatever you can get. Um, and they're, you know, they're probably saying the, the same thing. Um, but we would like to... You know, try to, you know, the way we've played all year, you know, have segments of the game where we can get to that. And we saw that last night. And uh, you're not going to get to that all the time. And um, I think the balance that we had was, was appropriate, um, where it wasn't, you know, too much of, of that. You, you get to too much of that, and they're, they're really good. You just saw it in the, the previous two rounds of the kind of offensive talents. You know, they were able to limit, you know, two really good offensive teams down. It's going to take a, a, a real collective uh, effort offensively. Tyler Why? mentioned that um, each game is, is its own, but at the beginning of the series for you, is there sort of a feel out period what the other team's trying to do? And yeah. If, uh, with Marcus and Al possibly coming back at some point, do you kind of have to go through that again? Yeah, uh, but we've we've been dealing with this now for a month. You know, um, dealing with uh, guys in and out uh, or preparing for. You know the possibilities of guys coming back, uh, and even with us, that's just you know what you have to deal with. I don't know that this was going to be a series with two great defenses. Jimmy's ability to get to the free throw line just be relentless, continuing to attack the rim. How does that wear down a, a defense as a leader's Boston? Yeah, it, 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 there was an element of ground and pound, uh, and Boston typically does a really good job of defending, you know, without fouling. Um, so Jimmy's ability just to create something. And get you know defenses in compromised positions is is a skill. It's a talent. You know they'll be trying to take that away where they're not fouling them. But uh, you know he's 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 great at it, and it allowed us to kind of control the the, uh, the game. You know on certain important segments of it. League wide, the percentage of shots at the rim has dropped for five straight postseasons. Just how difficult is it to to get to the rim in the yeah. playoffs and do you have any idea why Chesapeake made you drop it? Mm, I don't, you know. Uh, but I just know it is. It is difficult. You know, you, you talk about, like, all year long or the last several years, you know, the 
the shot quality and you want to get to the layups, free throws, threes, good luck if that's all you're trying to get to in you know, the conference finals and, and beyond. Uh, everybody's just too well drilled and scouting and prep. Uh, it, just, it just increases tenfold. Um, so you have to make some of these plays in between. That's where Tyler was really important last night as well. Can you prioritize rim protection a little bit more? We always do, and we got eviscerated in the first half. It just shows you the kind of talent uh, that we're dealing with. You know, we, we do it very well, and they were uh, carving us up in the paint at, at an historic rate in the first half. Uh, and it wasn't all about us. You can't just say like, we, yeah, we got to do it better. Yeah, certainly we do, but they're also, you know, very challenging. They they put a lot of pressure on your defense, and you have to do a lot of things uh, with great intensity and, and detail. Uh, you can't just run around. You have to do it with with, with focus and intention. Well, just to follow up on what you're saying with Max and the mental consistency, <laughs> how rare is that in your experience for a young player who hasn't played much to maintain that throughout his first year doing the league? Um, yeah, we've had you know some guys that have been able to do it, uh, some guys that haven't. But you know, he went through a full season last year with us and a full summer league. Uh, so he's not a rookie. Um, and I, I get why people, a lot of probably the general um, public out there outside of Florida have no idea who he is. He's been in our program for two years. Um, he was outstanding in our summer program and summer league. Um, and he went through a lot of ups and downs and learning experiences last year. Uh, but I thought those thousand plus minutes were really important for him. And the minutes are not like typical minutes for a, a young player. There were minutes with great context, pressure, and expectations. And if it wasn't being done right, vets were going to jump all over them. You know, I, I think that's the fastest way to, to learn in this league. And, you know, we're talking now 24 months of that. You know, uh, he's got a lot of experience on, under his belt. Eric, I'll ask Last two the, questions. Eric, the uh, production, the statistics from Jimmy. Yeah. But the way he's playing, how much of that is necessary or caused by Kyle not being up there? That's part of it, I'm sure. Um, you know, the two of them are really similar uh, in this regard that they are, are such great competitors uh, that they have a, a sense, an innate sense of what's needed for the team. Uh, and if it feel, if they feel like, you, you know, you need more scoring or, or more offensive punch, um, you know, as we've needed in some of these games. We needed it. We're playing against an elite defense. You know, Jimmy was able to make some plays that were in between, you know, that um, I'm not talking about mid-range. I'm just talking about, like, kind of just random plays that great players make. Uh, and he knows that we, we needed that. Um, and he's able to kind of do that. Or if he, if, if he calls for other guys to score and he needs to be a facilitator, he can toggle back and forth, you know, between those roles. Last question. 